Hello, and welcome to Tank and Amphi News. We are continuing um, our rash of book reviews as we sort of go through some of the stuff that's been sent to us recently. Um, this one from the uh, folks at Casemate uh, have sent us uh, one of the new books in the Casemate Illustrated series. It is 3rd SS Panzer Regiment, which was part of the 3rd SS Panzer Division Totenkopf, which one of the uh, more famous German SS Panzer divisions during World War II. Um, and this book... So I'll zoom up here. I'm not. I don't want the author's name there. Pierre, uh, French last name. Not even going to try it because I'll slaughter it. Uh, anyhow, so this is part of the Case of May Illustrated series, um, and we've seen some of these before, and they all sort of follow a similar uh, format. So they are. It's a soft cover book. It's kind of got these nice little folded over covers to give it sort of the illusion of almost like a hard cover, but it's not. Um, but, you know, sort of like a dust jacket. Uh, nice glossy paper. This one comes in at about 128 pages. And, let's see, price is $24.95 or $19.99 as far as British pounds. And uh, nicely illustrated. I, always thought, I, I think this series, you know, from a visual standpoint, is a very attractive series. I, I think uh, they, they present rather well in that regard. Um, as far as the content, so this is... Um, I would not call it a history per se. This is really a collection of uh, snippets from interviews with veterans of this unit um, done years after the fact. Um, like I said, the, the author is French and he compiled these interviews um, a while ago, I would assume, since by this point most of these veterans are probably all passed. Uh, says, over the last 30 years, he has met with many veterans of the German Army and Waffen SS, and has a large collection of rare photos and information about these uh, quote unquote elite troops. Uh, now retired, he has more time to work on his collection publications. So that's uh, really about all I know about this particular author. So, anyway, let's look in the book and see what we have here. Um, obviously, it's arranged chronologically. Um, and everything in this book takes place on the Eastern Front. So starting, so here's a timeline just for people. So the units formed in late 42. Um, so you're not really going to find much on Barbarossa in here, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, you will find lots of pictures, because of course, since this guy interviewed these individuals, he was able to get their, their photos. Um, you know, one thing you'll notice, these, uh, these German... Uh, SS soldiers, uh, they all sort of had a flair for the dramatic in terms of the pictures with the, the hats on sideways and looking off away from the camera, which is sort of a very distinctive thing in the wartime photos. Um, and as you can see, so it sort of is not a history in that it's not based on archival materials, um, and it doesn't provide a huge amount of detail as to the different operations uh, this unit was um, operating in. So if you're looking for a history of this regiment or 3rd SS Panzer Division, that's not what this does. This sort of assumes that you already know the general um, history of the Eastern Front and where this division was, and instead what it's providing is these sort of interview snippets. So um, you can see sort of, you know, it'll have like these longer sentences that are the in, sort of saying who's speaking and, and, and what their uh, rank and position was, and then the smaller text is, is the interview text. So flip forward here. So and, you, know, you can see some of them are fairly long uh, excerpts where they describe different actions um, and quite a few photos. So this guy obviously um, was able to uh, get quite a few photos from these veterans, which means a lot of these photos also are probably not ones that have appeared in other books, uh, per se, uh, particularly of the vehicles. It, does, it provides a little bit of information on the vehicles themselves. You know, you'll see as we go through here that... Uh, has a little page and descriptions, but for people looking for, for detailed analysis of the vehicles, you're not going to find that in here. And frankly, within the text of the guys speaking, they don't get into a whole lot of technical detail. Um, most of the guys that are serving it, uh, that are interviewed in this book served in either Panzer 3s or 4s, um, and there are some Tigers as well. Um, because, of course, one thing that's interesting about the SS Panzer divisions as opposed to the regular army, um, whereas the regular army had all their Tigers pretty much in the, um, the Schwer Abteilungs, the heavy battalions, the SS had an organic heavy tank uh, company attached to the division itself. 
So for people that are interested in particularly in the history of the Tiger tanks, you will find some, some photos and excerpts of Tiger crewmen in here. So here we see a little detail on the Panzer profiles. This section, of course, on Kursk. More Tiger pictures. Um, and like I said, as with all the books in the series, the paper quality is nice. The photo reproduction is really nice. The pa uh, you know, sort of glossy paper. So um, that's good. The remembrances are, like I said, most of them are dealing with combat situations. Um, you don't get quite as much of the kind of slice of life on the Eastern Front, just sort of, you know, what's going on when they're not fighting. Um, although there is quite a bit of, particularly on some of the, 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 he interviews some of the people from the maintenance units talking just about all the trouble they had as far as recovering vehicles and just with the, the poor quality of the Russian roads and the mud. So that's uh, sort of interesting stuff. And the, the combat accounts are, uh, most of them seem fairly um, sober. You know, you get the feeling that the guys retelling them are probably trying to give a fairly, not, not trying to embellish too much. But, you know, that's always a problem with these kind of things. You're talking to these guys years after the fact. And, of course, human nature is to want to make yourself look good. I mean, that's something everybody does. In particular, you're talking about guys who probably are quite defensive about... Um, their wartime service uh, and probably there's a lot of things they don't want to talk about because you know obviously this is the Waffen SS they don't have a very good reputation um, amongst the rest of the world and for very good reason um, as at the Nuremberg trials where they declared the SS to be essentially a criminal organization so uh, you know that's, a, that's another thing to take into account so what you're getting in here you have to always sort of take with a grain of salt because these guys are talking much later after the fact they're probably leaving some things out, and it's just human nature to try to make yourself look better. Um, so, and without sort of taking these accounts and then comparing them to the archival data that's available, if it's available, it's sort of hard to judge the accuracy of some of these stories. That said, it still has value in that it illustrates um, really just how intense and, 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 frankly, how just terrible and nasty the combat on the Eastern Front was. Because um, some of the, you know, almost all these stories end up with um, most of these guys who survived. It, it's because they got wounded and were sent back back home. Um, you know, very few of these guys just sort of, oh, the war's over and I'm still in one piece. No, that's not really the case. Uh, so, with that said, um, I think I'm going to sort of flip through here. People can see the rest of it. So it covers. I think goes up to about Hungary as sort of one of the last actions. So for people that are interested in this kind of thing, as far as um, sort of veterans stories from the war, particularly guys serving in German panzers, this will be of interest. Um, like I said, it, it includes guys who served in Panzer 3s, 4s, and um, Tigers, and some Panthers as well later on. Uh, for those that are looking, though, for a history of this division, this book is not really that. This is really more of... Um, almost more like something that would be like supplemental to uh, a history of third SS Panzer. Um, this kind of gives you a little bit of um, background information and a feel for what it was like for these men at, insofar as what they're willing to say and talk about. So again, want to thank the fine people at uh, Casemate for sending this copy for me to look at. And um, yeah, like I said, this should be available, you know, either directly through Casemate's website or any of the other online book vendors. And uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.